Alrighty, episode four, and welcome back. <coughs> Practically dying in this heat. We've come across a problem. Now I did find all my forels and my crimping tool and my larger format forels, or bootlaces I think they call it, um, and the crimping tool for that. If anybody needs to borrow those crimping tools, they're here for free borrow. You can just come and grab them. Um, so those ones there will go on to the 32 millimeter square. So up in there, if you can see it and there, and then I'll put some forels on all of these. So I tidy it all up and get the best possible connections I can make. So that is not really the problem. What the problem is now is I have to take all of that down again. Well, at least the battery side of it and the wall off again. So I reached out to Batrium last night. I just sort of, you know, asked the question. I said, look, am I doing this right? Is there anything I could do better? He sort of gave me a thumbs up and then a little bit of a pondering question and said, what about the temperature senders or the temperature sensors? And at that point I went, oh, <clears throat> you've got to be kidding me. So I have to take those two down. The plan will be this, this one, this Watchmon, seven has got two temperature sensors so i'll probably just hang a temperature sensor sort of down there and then down the top just so i get a sort of a rough idea of the temperature of the actual battery bank itself there's only two temp sensors it's not like the the decentralized long mons where you have two per cell so i'm going to pull all that out now we'll get these installed we'll get the forels done and then we'll start hooking up the bait trim and the balance leads between the box between the cells Probably not going to work. Well, that wasn't anything like how bad I thought it would be. A couple of extra minutes, not the end of the world, not a deal breaker. So let's throw this back up. We'll take the opportunity to put a couple more screws in it as well at the same time. I would hope this is the last time I have to do this. There we go. We've got four decent sized bolts, top and bottom. We've got the temperature sensors there now. We've got five in the top one, four in the bottom one. So I'm happy with that. Uh, what I'm not happy with is those long ones up the top. Now, I thought that would be a good idea to leave them there, but I'm now thinking, get rid of them. I'm not gonna need them again, so I'll quickly get that done. There, back to where we started from. Not horrible, but damn, it's hot in here. Okay. Now we've got to add some fuses to these little ring terminals. We're going to put some glass fuses on there. So let's get this done. After soldering all those connectors and putting the fuses on, I've installed it all. 
Um, now, as you can see here, I've got the, what do you call it, the fuse encased in some heat shrink. And then the cable goes to the eyelet here and then through the wall underneath there. And similarly, that's the same on all of them there, nice and neat and tidy. Uh, now, I was going to do some fuses in between these balance leads between the packs, but not overly sure of the actual current between or whether it would actually serve any purpose. If you think it would serve as a purpose, I would put them on later on down the track if necessary. But personally, I don't think it's needed. It is very neat and tidy. I'm very pleased with the way it actually turned out. I actually forgot to put the cables in for the inverter, but I've since worked that out. I've since worked that out. We've just, I've removed the breakers here because I was going to have some breakers from this to my batteries, but it's going through this shunt trip anyway. So that stood the reason that I used that. I could disconnect all the power and also clean up a whole heap of cables here and free up some room here. Now I'm not altogether sure whether or not this will be my final layout of all the cables. Uh, I still haven't done the Pharrell's here because I don't quite, still don't know where I'm going to pull the power from. Um, and I'm not liking how all these cables are sort of lying around. I think I might actually make a loom once I work out where all the cables are running. I might actually make a, a braided sleeve loom for all that to really tidy that up as well, just to make it look aesthetically pleasing. And this has just got some tape on it and I don't like the way that looks either. So I wouldn't mind cleaning that up and those cables, I know that's a little bit pedantic, but I am enjoying this process of, you know, designing and redesigning this over and over again until it looks perfect. And now I've um, got all those cables there from the solar and then back up to the charge controller. So they're all neat, neat and tidy now. And then we've got the four, cab the four cables there, two from the solar charge controller in and then two that go out to the inverter. Now, for the inverter, I was actually gonna put that up here. Uh, I thought that would have looked good, but I'm gonna reserve this area because I yet might buy a PIP 2424. No, it's a 3.4, so it's a 3,000 watt, um, a 30.24, I think, inverter up there and replace out that PCM6CX. I'm, yeah, I, I, I don't know how I'm gonna justify that at the moment because then I've gotta get an electrician and stuff like that. At the moment, what I've done is I've just run this little inverter now that one of the community members actually loaned me. This is not mine. Uh, it's just a little thousand watt pure chinesium inverter, but it lays out there nice and neatly. I've just got a couple of bits of board and I've just used it to sandwich. This, this is actually touching the metal here. And then underneath is just a small piece of board hooked around the lip there. So it sandwiches it in nicely. And it's all, um, you can't see it, but all behind there is all open, which is allows for good airflow. And I've just got those two cables there. The positive, I had to find a nut for it because I didn't have it. And then the negative across there. Uh, if you can see that into the wall, nice and neat and tidy. Uh, I don't know if I could have done that any better um, for the size of it and whatever. I didn't really have a plan where I was gonna put that from the beginning. So I think that is a very good result if you ask me. Now I've also got all the Batrium all hooked up and up and running. Um, the shunt trip isn't done yet because I still gotta run the wiring. We've got the OA and OB there. And now they are the ports that I will be using for the shunt trip. So that one's the OA is the shunt trip and the OB will be for the fans. Now the fans themselves, I haven't got them finished yet. I've got the two cables there, the negative and positive going down there. And I've already got the heat shrink on there. And I'm gonna go the negative to another, these are 12 volt fans, but I'm running a 24 volt system. So I'm gonna go the negative here to another fan, which is going to sit on top of here when it comes into stock. And then that one is going to be uh, positive. So I'll grab the positive of the of the new fan and hook it up to the negative of that. Place it on top of there, screw it all down. I've done some test fits. I've already damaged. You can see the hair taking the paint off the heat sink, but that won't matter once it's on, the fan is on top. And then I'll run the negative around to here, put the negative into there. And then I'll run the positive up into positive here or positive here actually, because that will make it fused. So that is how I plan on doing that. What do you reckon, Tubers? Do you think that turned out okay? Uh, now I have got the Watchmon Toolkit installed and all working. So I've done a few tests with it so far. I took out, what did we take out last night? Um, this is not my usual setup. So I took about 40 amp hours out of the batteries last night. I, I put it at about 160 amp hours. 
So still at 27 volts there. We are charging up with one kilowatt of panels, so that's going all right. And so far I've got, now this is a little bit of a mess because it's not really well planned. I don't know how it was ever gonna work. So the first plug there is just to the Ryobi charger. The second plug there is to all these lights. They're four LED uh, 17 watt light bulbs. Uh, sorry, eight. So they're all on the inverter at the moment. And then the laptop and my surveillance cameras. So there's eight surveillance cameras, DVR, and two wireless routers or something is on the last plug there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how permanent this is going to be because I don't know how long that inverter is going to last. It has already been in service, so it's already well and truly into its lifespan, I would think. But anyway, tubers, that concludes that one. I might do one more of this rig. We might do some time lapses and stuff like that and do a load test and make sure all the batteries, you know, go down and up at the same rate. Also, might get a time lapse of that balancing. But tubers... Thank you very much for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.